Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the video. I am Tara. I'm a registered nurse, health coach, nutritionist, personal trainer. I help women get healthy, fit, and strong um, without dieting. I really dislike diets and the diet culture. So that's me. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about you in the comments. Um, today I want to talk about pain and pleasure. And I want to talk about how those two things relate to you trying to reach your goals, your health goals, your body goals, whatever type of goals you have, these things play a big role. So if you are on my newsletter list, then you actually got a sneak peek at this yesterday in yesterday's newsletter. Um, I sent out two videos and the second video, part two, went into like our brain's mission statement. So let me just recap on that real quick for the people who didn't catch that and then we're going to get into it. So our brain has this mission statement, all of our brains, we're all human. And the mission statement basically is to avoid pain, seek pleasure, and do so while expending as little energy as possible. Okay, avoid pain, seek pleasure, don't expend much energy. And you could see where that was necessary for survival. So that's how we've been wired. That totally makes sense, right? So if you go back to our ancestors and you know avoid pain, don't get eaten by the tiger. <laughs> um, don't get kicked out of the tribe because then you don't have your protection, right? Those are all painful things, whether physically painful or emotionally painful. Um, seek pleasure, you know, make sure you find some food today um, and expend as little energy as possible. You know, conserve your energy. You don't know when you're going to get the next meal. Okay. So that's like a little bit of our past. Now here we are in 2019, almost 2020, and obviously our surroundings are a bit different, but it still works the same way. Our brain is still wired to avoid pain, seek pleasure, and expend as little energy as possible. So that's a problem sometimes. <laughs> it's a problem only when we don't understand it, and it's a bigger problem when we don't work with it and we try to work against it, okay? AKA every single diet you've ever heard of that feels restrictive. It's not seeking pleasure and it's not avoiding pain. It's actually the opposite. Um, and the energy expenditure thing comes into it also. So, all right, I want you to think of these things. A lot of times when we think about making a change, um, that feels painful in and of itself. Just the idea of change can feel painful. So think about the things that you're looking to do and how they might feel, like they might feel like work. So a lot of people are looking to, let's say, get into a workout habit, drink more water, um, break up with overeating, eat more vegetables, anything like that that you know is a stepping stone towards the result that you wanna get at the end, right? Because most of us have an idea. We're here, we wanna be there, and we have an idea at least, a rough idea of a few of the stepping stones we need to get from one place to another. Um, maybe we don't have it all mapped out exactly. Um, maybe there's some confusion, right? There's a lot of confusion in the nutrition and fitness industry. Um, but there's probably several things at least that you know will help you get to, towards your goals that you're just not able to do or not able to maintain on a consistent basis. So I want you to think about those things and how a lot of times you might, if you're like a to-do list person like me, you might even add those things to your to-do list. Drink more water, right? You might put a little, a few boxes that you wanna check off every time you drink a glass of water if you're trying to drink more water. I've done it. Um, work out, that might go on your to-do list, right? Um, even like getting more sleep, that might go on your to-do list. So the things that you're looking to do might go on your to-do list. Now I want you to consider three things right now, okay? Earmuffs if you got little kids listening. Um, food, sex, and sleep. Those are three things that don't go on our to-do list. Yes, I just said sleep, but I'm talking about, you know, like sleeping more maybe. But sleeping at all, you're not like, oh shoot, don't forget to sleep tonight. <laughs> Same thing with food, right? You're not, yes, we get busy sometimes, we have to grab a meal on the go, or we might even skip a meal if we're super busy, I understand that. But in general, you don't have to remind yourself to eat because it feels so good to eat, 
it releases dopamine. Our body tells us all kinds of, gives us all kinds of signals that we're hungry. So it reminds us and we eat. So typically most people don't have to put eating on their to-do list. And then that other thing in the middle, well, that doesn't go on the to-do list either, right? These are things that we have a much easier time incorporating into our lives because they feel good. They're pleasurable. It's this inborn thing. It's the survival from way back when, and that's just part of our brain. But yet the other things, the working out, well, why isn't that just a part of everyone's day, right? Some people it is. Um, I, I love to work out. I'm at that place right now because I've done it for long enough. It's a habit, and I love the endorphins and the meat. There's a million things. <laughs> There's a lot of things I like about it. But that's only because now it's become pleasurable for me, right? But if you're just starting out, if you're going from somebody who is sedentary and you're looking to start a workout routine, that doesn't necessarily feel pleasurable. In fact, it probably feels painful physically and also emotionally, that change, that whole like, um, you know, a lot of times people try to jump from doing nothing right into one hour workout several times a week, right? So if that feels painful physically and emotionally. So how can we work then if we understand the way that our brain works, that it wants to avoid pain, it wants to seek pleasure, then first of all, it's no wonder why other attempts that you may have had in the future to reach your goals haven't worked or they haven't lasted because chances are you weren't framing it in that way where you were trying to make it pleasurable and avoid pain. So here's the trade-off because there's always trade-offs, right? The trade-off is might your results come a little bit slower if you do things in a more pleasurable way and ease into them? I mean, yes, <laughs> but to me, that's the only way to get it done. Um, there's no sense in in going against the way that your brain is wired. It doesn't last. It will never last because your brain always has the upper hand here. So let's talk about how you can use this idea to help you get towards your goals. So let's say, again, for the workout example, how can you make your workout, one, more pleasurable, and two, less painful? I want you to be thinking about everything like this. More pleasurable, less painful. Well, number one, I just gave you the example before. Don't jump right into it. If you're you're somebody who doesn't work out consistently, work on building that consistent habit first. Work out for five minutes a day. Work out for one minute a day. The idea is that you're getting used to the change. You're making it a habit. You're making your brain understand that this whole thing called working out isn't as bad as it thinks. That's important. So it's actually important. Even if you're doing, you know, if you plan to work out for five minutes and you're like really into it, um, if you're somebody who's tried and failed in the past, it's important then to actually even cut yourself off at five minutes, at least initially, because you don't want it to end up becoming a painful thing because then the next day you'll wake up and your brain's going to go, see, I told you this workout thing is painful. We're done. So even if you're into it for five minutes and you're just starting out, stop yourself at the five minutes. Seriously, there's always tomorrow. Tomorrow you can do seven minutes, but ease into it so you're avoiding pain. And the other thing is, make it more pleasurable. How can you add something to the experience to make it more pleasurable? I love to listen to music, so I will have certain songs that I'll listen to just when I work out. I get excited for that. Maybe a special playlist, um, a special podcast. Maybe you work out with a friend, so it's a chance to catch up. Um, Maybe you're a busy mom like me, and just if you can get some time to work out by yourself, that feels like a vacation because you're by yourself and you have your thoughts to yourself, right? Things that we don't normally get too often. Um, Pair it up with something that makes it feel more pleasurable. I know people that are looking to start walking on the treadmill and so they have a show they can only watch it while they're walking on the treadmill so they're pairing up their favorite show with walking on the treadmill, whatever. Whatever your thing is just to get you to move more. The main thing at first is that you're starting that habit. Eventually, we can tweak what you do to get you the best results. But First, you need to build up that habit and you need to work with your brain, the pain and the pleasure. Okay, so that's the workout. Let me give you another example. How about the opposite example? How about breaking up with overeating? A big thing that I talk about here because it's a big topic that comes up amongst my clients. It's something that nearly everyone experiences. Overeating, eating for reasons outside of fueling your body and physical hunger. Eating because you're bored, eating because you're sad, 
um, eating because you are looking to give yourself a break, all of those reasons. Eating to numb some kind of a big emotion, whether you are aware of it or not, these are things that happen really often. So in this case, I want you to look at it kind of the other way. If it's something that you're doing on a continual basis, time after time, it's bringing you some sort of pleasure, even if the end result is that you're having more pain as a result because you're, you're not reaching your goals and you feel bloated and you, you know, feel anxious and you feel like you're, you're hopeless. It's not going to change all of those things. So it's, it can be physically and emotionally painful. So I want you to consider what is this doing for me? What is the pleasure I'm getting? Number one, when we eat, we have this rise in dopamine that is like a feel-good hormone, a feel-good neurotransmitter. And that is elevated when it's a a lab-produced product. So it's not a real whole food. When you're eating something that's man-made, that's been designed to have a certain bliss point, a certain um, kind of combination of tastes and, and mouth textures and things that is supposed to basically light up your brain like fireworks. Your dopamine is supposed to have this hyper reaction. Um, That's what they want to do because they want you to go back and buy their food again. So if you're overeating, chances are you're not overeating on an avocado or an apple at night. You're probably overeating on something that was man-made. And because it has this bliss point, it makes it even harder. So there's a little bit of an addictive quality to it as well. But besides that, it's also doing something for you. It's giving you that break. It's allowing yourself to numb out from the um, whatever painful emotion maybe you're trying to avoid in the moment, whatever. So I want you to just, just be aware next time that you do it, this is doing something for me. What is it doing for me? What kind of a void is this filling for me? Think about it. Just think about it. That's a good place to start. The other thing to consider here with the pain and pleasure is the the present you versus the future you. So a lot of times it can feel more painful to do the thing in the moment that's gonna get you closer to your goals, but it brings you the pleasure in the future. So it's it's maybe a not even necessarily painful, but but harder and more of a struggle and more of a sacrifice in the moment, but you're setting your future self up for a win. So you do the workout now and then, you know, daily or almost daily. And eventually, you're going to be a stronger person. You're going to be more fit. You're going to be happy about that, right? You um, cut out some of the processed food now and add more real whole foods. You're going to end up noticing, feeling better, seeing those results in the future, right? So you do the the harder thing, the, the thing that takes more sacrifice right now, and you get that trade-off in the future. So you basically swap, and instead of choosing pleasure in the moment and pain in the future, you choose pain, I mean, I use that loosely, not really pain, but you choose the sacrifice up front to get the pleasure that will come down the line. That's a big um, emotional maturity thing to be able to do that. And it's not even emotional maturity that just like comes with age. It's something that a lot of people don't have. And and it's it's a thing that needs to be practiced and continually practiced. So Here's the best part of it, because you might be saying, but Tara, you talk about living in the present moment. Yeah, it's something that I am always trying to work on also, right? It's hard, and I'm somebody who's very type A, <laughs> um, more more anxiety. Um, I tend to have more anxiety, you know, along with that type A. Like, that's just kind of my, my personality type. And so with along with that comes a lot of future focus. A lot of people that have anxiety are more future focused and a lot of people that have depression are more um, past focused. But so I'm t- I tend to be more future focused. So rather than just thinking to set myself up for the future and ignore myself in the present, this is the best part of what I just said. If you tackle the hard things, the, the things that are a struggle, the trade-offs in the moment to set yourself up for that pleasure in the future, you're also giving yourself more pleasure in the present moment because you're becoming stronger, you're becoming more resilient, not not just stronger because you're working out or whatever, but whatever your thing is, you're becoming stronger because you are working that muscle that you need to do the harder thing in the moment. That's a muscle that needs to get worked. It's not easy. It's not easy to say, okay, I'll get up super early to work out even though the much easier thing right now would be to stay cozy in my bed. 
It takes determination and it takes um, dedication and it's a trade-off, right? So you have to be willing to do that for your future self. But in the moment, you get the strength, you get the resilience that's building and you get the confidence because when you can start checking off those boxes towards getting yourself to the goals, focusing on the behaviors that you can control, because there's a lot a lot of things out there that we can't control, but you can control your behaviors, your reaction to things, whether you look at things as excuses or, um, or rework them to look for the opportunities in the moment. If you do that, you're setting your future self up for pleasure and your present self up for pleasure in the form of this confidence and strength and resilience. It's a win-win scenario. So next time that you're doing something that you don't want to do anymore, I want you to think about what is the pleasure that you're getting out of it and how can you turn that around? How can you make that thing that you're doing that you don't want to be doing more painful? Maybe it's as simple as connecting to what this is actually doing to you. So if overeating is an issue for you, think about what it's doing to your body when you overeat. That might be pain enough to start to push you away from it. And then I want you to focus on finding pleasure in doing something else instead. And the opposite is true. When you're looking to start doing something and it feels painful, I want you to think about how, two things. How you can make it more pleasurable, so pair it up with something else that's more pleasurable, and how can you make it less painful. Are you trying to do something that's just too much too soon? That's the case with a lot of things. If something feels too painful, if something is not sticking, you're looking to do something and it's just not sticking, you're probably trying to make too big of a change at once. And our brains will keep going there. It's amazing. I talk to so many people who are like, I know, I just, I get that. Logically, I get it, but I still just want to do all of it at once. I know, I know what that's like, but the thing is, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So if you actually really want the success in whatever your health goals or body goals are, you really have to do it this way. And I promise your results will actually end up coming faster and lasting because you are just focused on taking it one step at a time and it's not something that's just gonna crash and burn in the future. So work with your brain, right? Brain's mission statement, avoid pain, seek pleasure, and expend as little energy as possible. I hope that helped and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.